In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the grace and peace of God our Father, the love of the Lord Jesus, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with each of you always. Amen. The clarion voice of prophet and precursor, prepare the way of the Lord, and invite us to do our work to remove all the obstacles that prohibit us from receiving the Lord when at last he comes. And so, brothers and sisters, let us call to mind our sin, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, promised Messiah, long-awaited Savior, Justice of God, Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, Son of God, Son of Mary, Word made flesh, Christ have mercy. Jesus, hope of the poor, light of the nations, and Prince of Peace, Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, may no earthly undertaking hinder those who set out in haste to meet your Son, but may our leaning, learning of heavenly wisdom gain us admittance to his company, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Comfort, give comfort to my people, says the Lord. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and proclaim to her that her service is at an end. Her guilt is expiated. Indeed, she has received from the hand of the Lord double for all her sins. A voice cries out, In the desert prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the wasteland a highway for our God. Every valley shall be filled in, every mountain and hill shall be made low. The ragged land shall be made a plain, the rough country a broad valley. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed. And all people shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Go up unto a high mountain, Zion, herald of glad tidings. Cry out at the top of your voice, Jerusalem, herald of good news. Fear not to cry out and say to the cities of Judah, Here is your God. Here comes with power the Lord God. 
who rules by his strong arm. Here is his reward with him, his recompense before him. Like a shepherd, he feeds his flock. In his arms, he gathers the lambs, carrying them into his bosom and leading the youth with care. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the second letter of St. Peter. Do not ignore this one fact, beloved, that with the Lord one day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years like one day. The Lord does not delay his promise, as some regard delay, but he is patient with you, not wishing that any should perish but that all should come to repentance. 
But the day of the Lord will come like a thief. And then the heavens will pass away with a mighty roar, and the elements will be dissolved by fire. And the earth and everything done on it will be found out. Since everything is to be dissolved in this way, what sort of persons ought you to be, conducting yourselves in holiness and devotion, waiting for and hastening the come of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be dissolved in flames and the elements melted by fire? But according to his promise, we await new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. Therefore, beloved, since you await these things, be eager to be found without spot or blemish before him at peace. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord. The beginning of the Gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in Isaiah the prophet, Behold, I am sending my messenger ahead of you. He will prepare your way. A voice of one crying out in the desert, Prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight his paths. John the Baptist appeared in the desert, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. People of the whole Judean countryside and all the inhabitants of Jerusalem were going out to him and were being baptized by him in the Jordan River as they acknowledged their sins. John was clothed in camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist. He fed on locusts and wild honey. And this is what he proclaimed. One mightier than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop and loosen the thongs of his sandals. I have baptized you with water. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. We have one week 
of this new year of grace under the belt. And it is at the beginning of this second week that we finally go to the beginning, at least the beginning of Mark's gospel. And Mark's gospel, with his first sentence, gives us the whole story. The beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Ultimately, that's all we need to know. The rest of the story will verify those statements. And just like the preface of a book gives you an indication about what the book is about, so too does this first line of Mark's gospel tell us the entire story. Jesus, who is the Christ, the Anointed One, the Messiah, the Son of God, no mere mortal is this Jesus of Nazareth. But he is one who comes to give us gospel, comes to give us good news. And the good news only begins to unfold. Now Mark's gospel, after that first sentence, begins very differently than the other synoptic gospels of Matthew and Luke, which Mark heavily influenced. Both Matthew and Luke give us a couple chapters of infancy narrative. And the intention of those infancy narratives is to link Jesus into the history of the chosen people and to identify him with the, his Jewish heritage and the hopes and the dreams of all of the prophets throughout the ages. Mark's gospel essentially does the same thing because the first voice we hear in Mark's gospel is that of the precursor, John the Baptist, who comes to prepare the way of the Lord. And he too roots Jesus firmly in his Jewish heritage by evoking the wisdom of the great prophet Isaiah. Comfort. Give comfort to my people. Boy, we could use a lot of comfort right now. Every time we think we're turning the corner on this pandemic, it rears its ugly head all the more. And we feel more anxious. We feel more stressed. We feel more isolated. And we are desperately in need of the very comfort that Isaiah proclaimed to the Jews of his time. But he's speaking, and this is the beginning of the uh, second Isaiah, Deutero Isaiah, with chapter 40 through 55 in the book of the prophet Isaiah. He's speaking to exiles who have been liberated from their slavery and are on their way home. And they need comfort because they've come to realize what a daunting task it will be to rebuild their lives. Not just to rebuild the holy city of Jerusalem nor to restore the temple, but to be renewed in their own covenant fidelity. They looked at their a time of exile as being expiation for their infidelity, forgiveness for their sin. Imagine there are religious leaders who look at this whole pandemic about God's getting even with us. And yet, as I've said before, God doesn't make bad things happen to people, good people or bad people. Bad things happen, and God can speak to us through them. But God does not make bad things happen. And so we look at this bad thing called COVID-19. And we also get insight from our scriptures today on how to deal with it. You know, John the Baptist, in echoing the prophet Isaiah, talks in terms of leveling the mountains and filling in the valleys and making the rough ways smooth and the crooked ways straight to make a straight highway for our God. 
It's not a matter of infrastructure, although that imagery speaks to us eloquently about what we need to do to make the journey easier for all of us. And it is the collaborative effort of the entire chosen people who have to begin to rebuild their lives, not just physically, but also spiritually. We hear even in our second reading from the second letter of St. Peter that he's dealing with that same issue we dealt with in those final weeks of the church's year about what's taking the Lord so long. When is this day of the Lord going to happen? We know, especially from Paul's writings, that they anticipated the day of the Lord would come in their own lifetime. But when the Lord seemed to delay in his coming, we hear the uh, author telling us uh, essentially what Psalm 90 says. In the eyes of God, a thousand years is like a day, and a day is like a thousand years. And it seems that much of our struggle during this COVID-19 situation is more like the thousand years than the single day. But what he's basically saying is that we need to hasten the day of the Lord. And how do we do that? He said, by living lives of holiness. And if we go back to the last Sunday of the church's year in the Feast of Christ the King, we know how we live lives in holiness. By taking care of the least of our brothers and sisters, by responding to the needs of the most vulnerable and forgotten, by feeding the hungry and clothing the naked and sheltering the homeless and caring for the sick and visiting the imprisoned, all of these things that are the simple acts of kindness that manifest the holiness of the people of God. Because when we care for the needs of one another, especially the most vulnerable and insignificant in our midst, we have ministered to the face of God. And so in hastening the day of the Lord, we need to do our part. We have practical ways of doing that right now, even in the face of the pandemic. Wear your mask, maintain your physical distance, wash your hands a lot, don't congregate with large crowds, figure out what six feet actually is between you and the person next to you. All of those things that in and of themselves aren't going to solve the problem, but they will help mitigate it. And so the very things we are called to do are common sense practices. And the same is true with hastening the day of the kingdom of God. We long for a new heaven and a new earth. That's what Peter says in that letter. And we always think of that as being the end of time. And yet the reality is that the coming of the kingdom of God and that new heaven and that new earth isn't something at the end of the line. It's something that's very much a part of our journey in the here and the now. And so we should listen to the clarion voices that define the season of John the Baptist and Isaiah the prophet. They have an Advent attitude. And it begins with a sense of self-discipline and humility. John the Baptist, we are told, began his ministry in the desert. We know a few things about the desert. And yet our experience of the desert is being a part of a major metropolitan region. You know you don't have to go too far outside the city limits when you're out in the desert and you know how barren and foreboding it can be, how blistering hot in the summer, how freezing cold in the winter, to know that there are a lot of threats to our own safety and our well-being in the desert. And it's in that kind of environment that John the Baptist calls us to a sense of self-denial. That we need to essentially put aside what we feel is going to ingratiate ourselves and make us feel good and work on what's going to make us all not only feel good, but to be a better people. 
by caring for the needs of one another and responding to the least of our sisters and brothers. The Advent season is a part of this whole Christmas celebration. And we see this as a time and a season of generosity. And that generosity begins by just making wise choices, by being responsible for ourselves and one another, and by doing our part to fill in the valleys, to level those mountains, to make the rough ways smooth and the crooked ways straight, to prepare a straight highway for our God. For behold, he comes. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sin, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Lord not, does not delay in his promise, St. Peter proclaims. As we await the fullness of God's glory, let us pray for the good of all God's people. That our Holy Father, our bishops, and all leaders of the Christian community may prepare a straight path for our God by a ministry of compassion and service to all God's people. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the church may always be attentive to the pro prophetic voice, like the voice of John the Baptist, calling us to a conversion of life and a recommitment to God's service through the care we extend to one another. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the healing of our nation and harmony and accord between the nations of the world, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For a renewed passion for service to the church and for an increase to vocations to the ordained and consecrated lives, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That God may speak tenderly to those who are ill or in special need, and bestow on them the comfort foretold by the prophet Isaiah. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all the dead may live in the light of peace of Christ, especially Leroy Knightman, and let us also remember Crispin Reyes, for whom this Mass is offered. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Come to the aid of your people, O God, and hear our prayer. 
May our Advent observance prepare us to embrace the glory of the Incarnation through Christ our Lord. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands. Praise the glory of his name. Our God, our God, our God. Be pleased, O Lord, with our humble prayers and offerings. And since we have no merits to plead our cause, come, we pray, to our rescue with the protection of your mercy through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago, and opened for us the way to eternal salvation. That when he comes again in glory and majesty, and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which we now dare to hope. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim.
You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst when we are gathered by his love. And when as once for his disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took the bread and said the blessing. He broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and gave you thanks. He gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the works of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us. And grant that by the power of the spirit of your love we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son in whose body and blood we have communion. Lord, renew your church which is in Phoenix by the light of the gospel. Strengthen the bond of unity between the faithful and the pastors of your people. Together with Francis, our Pope, Thomas, our Bishop, the whole order of bishops, that in the world torn by strife, your people may shine forth as a prophetic sign of unity and concord. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face, and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us, when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There, in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God and Our Lady of the Valley, with the Apostles and Martyrs, with Saint Raphael, with all the angels and saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. <clears throat> through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
At the Savior's command, informed by the word of God, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sin, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord be with each of you always. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Replenished by the food of spiritual nourishment, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that through our partaking in this mystery, you may teach us to judge wisely the things of earth and to hold firm to the things of heaven. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Tuesday is the Solemnity of the Immaculate Conception, the Patroness of the United States. A Vigil Mass for the Feast will be celebrated at 6.30 p.m. on Monday here at Our Lady of the Valley. Note that time is 6.30 p.m. And on Tuesday morning, Mass will be celebrated at 9 a.m. at St. Raphael. The St. Raphael Women's Guild Art and Crafts Sale uh, continues until noon tomorrow. Matter of fact, their hours are 8 a.m. to noon. Masks are required. Admittance to the hall is limited. And all COVID protocols will be observed. And that's in Hibner Hall. Reservations for Christmas Masses continues until December 15th for registered parishioners. As of December 16th, Christmas Mass reservations are open to all. Details have been sent to every parish household and are also included on the parish website. And the end is near. The 2021 parish calendars, complements of heritage mortuaries, are available outside the entrance of the church after Mass. We'll put the table outside so as not to have a lot of people congregating on top of one another. So when you grab your calendar or when you grab your parish bulletin, please be mindful of maintaining the appropriate physical distance. Holy Communion will be offered to live stream viewers until 5.30 p.m. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives. Thanks be to God. Oh,